Today, I'm just going to go over a bunch of uh, minerals I got over the holiday. I had a package sent to me. I picked up a package from a friend uh, I know, uh, actually a YouTuber. I'll uh, get to their, once I get to their stuff, I'll get to their information. Uh, I also did some trading. That material in the back is from a trade I did with a uh, local acquaintance in the Rock County community. And so I just want to go through everything and kind of just show you the um, minerals and crystal specimens that I got over the uh, holiday break. And uh, just to sh kind of share with you guys the cool stuff I have received recently for my collection. And, you know, kind of at the same time, kind of fill you in with my plans for 2024. Kind of like a channel update, let's put it that way. But... With further ado, we shall get into the minerals. I'll start in the front box on the left side and I'll just kind of work to the right and then go to the specimens that I tr traded for in the back and show you guys all that kind of stuff. So the first couple specimens all came from Digging Appalachia. I'll uh, make sure to link his channel below. He actually had recently won uh, one of my uh, subscriber giveaways. And uh, he so nicely, after he had received uh, the stuff I had sent him, he sent me some stuff back, which I really appreciate. He didn't have to do that, but he did. And I really appreciate the kind gesture. And the stuff he sent me is pretty cool. So this stuff here, this is uh, mica schist with some nice garnets. It's come from a spot in North Carolina, if I remember correctly, from the uh, note he sent me with it, the nice note he sent. And I'm a sucker for garnets, so I really like this stuff. Really pretty nice, sharp stuff. The garnets that I've collected in Ontario, um, there are some places in Ontario you can't collect anymore that you can get some nice, sharp garnets. But in general, the garnets are kind of like they're, they're a bit lumpier, a bit skeletal and stuff. Um, so I do appreciate a nice sharp garnet crystal, you know. This one's really cool. I love, I love the faces on this one. And just the color, the contrast of like the nice light silver mica schist with like the dark red kind of garnet. I, I suspect these are probably almondine. You'll have to let me know in the comments. But... These are awesome, awesome uh, garnet specimens from North Carolina. Number two is a specimen that some of you folks down south in the southern parts of the states, anybody who's collecting in Georgia might uh, recognize. This is a uh, kind of like a quartz cluster covered in hematite from uh, Graves Mountain. And Graves Mountain is kind of known for their uh, their what they like to call turgite, which I believe is just a combo, if I read their note correctly, is just a combo of iridescent hematite and gothite. Uh, but this specimen is a lovely, you can see the quartz points there, quartz crystal there. This is a quartz uh, crystal cluster that's just coated in this uh, kind of gothite hematite uh, mix. Really lovely specimen. I know exactly where this will go in my new display cases. Here are some more lovely garnets. These come from a location that I believe is pretty well known from North Carolina, the Little Pine Garnet Mine. Actually, it's a location I want to eventually stop by. Um, and you can see, I believe this one's polished, so this is kind of like what you... So the garnets are covered in this kind of tightly packed green mica schist. I believe if you polish that mica off, then you get to the garnet and you can kind of polish the faces. So this is a larger, chunkier garnet crystal that's been polished. And then this is in a smaller example that's been left covered up. I kind of like that, having a, a covered example and then an uncovered example that's been polished. And actually, this, I guess this will be a good good kind of announcement point. Uh, one of the announcements was that I was going to announced in this video is that I want to plan a trip down to Florida uh, this year. Hopefully a two-week trip. Work is very busy, but and it has been very busy for me for a while, so I haven't been able to do a lot, and I've really wanted to kind of do a wintertime trip down to Florida 
you know, to escape the heat, but also to do some mineral collecting to, you know, satiate my uh, mineral collecting urge. Um, and on the way down, I do want to hit up a couple spots. And I was wondering um, for you folks in like the Carolinas and like North and South Carolina, um, if there were any collecting spots that are open kind of during the the times of like uh, uh, the winter times because I, I wouldn't mind hitting up a couple spots on the way down and on the way up, you know, take my time. I don't want to be crazy and drive down and like one go to Florida. So I want to kind of just take my time, stop at a couple spots, do some collecting and then slowly make my way down to Florida and then spend the majority of my time in Florida, hopefully doing some collecting there. Um, and then head my way, uh, my way up again, take a couple days on the way up as well, do some more collecting, and, you know, get home before the holidays are over to uh, sort through the stuff I hope to collect. But yeah, that, though, I kind of, that's what, one of my announcements. I kind of wanted to just put that out there for, um, in hopes, actually, I was kind of hoping some local collectors in, like, Florida and the Carolinas could uh, reach out to me and just uh, fill me in on some information on maybe some collecting spots, or if you wanna, it, once I hopefully get my plans really set in stone, we can maybe talk about uh, meeting up and rock hounding together, because you know I enjoy meeting uh, other rock hounds and going collecting with them to spots that I haven't gone before. I enjoy that kind of thing. It's always better to go in a group, you know? Here we got a really cool milky quartz cluster with the black metallic uh, coating is what I'm told is manganese. This is pretty, this is awesome. I love the, I kind of love this. You can kind of see the edge, the edges of the crystal faces the sh where they meet. They're a slightly different color. They're kind of a more creamy white. And I love that contrast. That that's such a cool little feature to these crystals. This is this is pretty awesome. I don't have too much milky quartz uh, in my collection. I've there was only there's only been one spot where I collected some milky quartz crystals, and most of the stuff there was it was these veins that had basically almost most of the vein had fully uh, grown together, and there were only some very rare couple small pockets. And the crystal um, quality was not exactly super high quality. So I'm really happy to have something like this in my collection. This is fantastic. I love this. Here we have some more Graves Mountain material. This is kind of the more iridescent uh, hematite gothite combo. Let's see there's some nice blue iridescent sheens to it. This backside has slight iridescence to it. I love this side with the kind of these bacchioidal formations. That's really cool. And then this small piece, which is just like you, uh, like a whole bunch of small bacchioidal formations has some really lovely iridescence. You can see it on this side really well. You can just see that lovely iridescence that Graves Mountain is known for. I want to uh, hopefully be able to insert a bit of a uh, magnified close-up of this specimen because I think those formations will look amazing under the microscope. Continuing on, I have another awesome South Carolina quartz crystal cluster that Digging Appalachia sent me. This one you can see it's milky quartz capped off with a clear quartz, or at least that look, that's what it looks like to me. Um, and that makes it just look, it gives it a very distinct and really nice looking glassy kind of look and you can kind of see some of the crystals and I've seen some of those videos of this material where he's collected this material some of the crystals have a bit of skeletal like formation to them which is pretty cool um yeah like I'm just flabbergasted at how cool this cluster is this is another one of those ones where I know exactly where it's going to go in my display case. I'll have to make some room for it, but it's definitely, it's got a spot already in my mind. Last but definitely not least, 
he also sent me these awesome Herkimer quartz crystal from New York. You can see why people I can see why people uh, love these so much. Just the clarity and the the way the fractures are gives it just this awesome kind of like rainbow effect, and just like this glassy crystal crystal clear kind of icy crystal with these awesome little patterns and uh, splotches of just iridescence. You can see why they were such a hit with people. That's another place, speaking of which, that this year I want to make like a weekend trip down to. So maybe once the weather gets a bit nicer, if there's some of you guys want to want to go uh, hang out with me, I can maybe try and plan a bit of a trip uh, together for those who'd be interested in uh, hanging out with me in uh, Herkimer, New York to collect Herkimer crystals. Up next, we have specimens that were given to me by Coin and Relic Ontario. I will also leave a link to his channel below. This is a chunk of Hackmanite from the Davis Quarry, which is a quarry you can't collect at anymore. And um, this will look better under uh, UV light, under um, sh shortwave uh, UV light, I believe. Um, so hopefully I can throw up in the corner like a short video of this under UV light because it has this lovely kind of light peachy orange fluorescence to it that's different from the the CN rock dump, dump uh, Hackmanite, though, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I might be wrong on this, but I believe the material from the CN rock dump is from the Davis quarry, or it might be a quarry nearby if I'm uh, incorrect, but this just has this lovely peachy orange uh, fluorescence to it under UV light, so it's an awesome addition to my uh, fluorescent mineral section of my collection. With the specimens that Coin and Relic Ontario sent me, a lot of these specimens come from locations that you can't collect at anymore, whether it's because uh, people don't get permission to collect there anymore, so the owners, like the owners don't allow people to collect, or like the sites just don't exist anymore. So I'm very thankful for the specimens that he's given me because these are specimens that like I would never have a chance to personally collect. So I really appreciate that. This is a lovely diopside and trimolite uh, specimen from Salerno Lake. It's a nice large diopside crystal with the termination on the one end, and then it's got the spray of trimolite crystals kind of growing off the side. It's a lovely uh, specimen. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Dino Road in the sense that Dino Road has, um, instead of trimolite, it's a actinolite, but it's got diopside also, and I've got some diopside crystals that have like uh, actinolite on them. So this will this will probably end up actually in the same uh, same shelf as my Dino Road specimens. It'll fit well with them. Up next, we kind of have an Ontario classic for corundums. This is a lovely specimen of two really nice chunky corundum crystals from the Logan's occurrence in Ontario, and that's kind of. It's a well-known corundum occurrence. Unfortunately, you can't collect there anymore, but it's, it had produced some really, really lovely corundum specimens. And I'd have to say this is one of those. See these two very chunky, large corundum crystals kind of stacked on top of each other. This will definitely find a very nice spot in my cases because... This is an amazing specimen, and I'm very thankful that this was gifted to me. Now we quickly go out of Ontario to Surrey, Manitoba, for a piece of petrified wood. The uh, green, I don't know if you can see it, looks really nice. I'm thinking I'll actually polish this end eventually to accentuate that green. But this is a lovely, you can see it's probably agatized. Or jasperized or whatever but it's definitely some type of calcini and it just looks very very nice here we have a couple cobalt ontario specimens 
These are like silver, and this one, uh, this one's like a silver specimen. You can see the the veins of silver. Um, this one is a combination of silver and cobalt, and you can kind of see actually the middle bits, kind of the lighter metallic shine that I believe is the cobalt, and then the stuff on the edges, I believe, is uh, the silver. Actually, the kind of the duller metallic shine, and then there's all that pink pink bits that's I believe a sign of cobalt I don't know what it is exactly I think it's some type of cobalt based mineral that like comes after cobalt as it uh, oxidizes or reacts with surrounding minerals and it causes the nice pink coloration and this one is just like an example of a lovely chunk of silver you can actually see on the back end the uh, a vein of silver running through, I believe this is like calcite and dolomite, if I remember correctly. Cobalt materials found in like these uh, calcite veins. Here we have a nice terminated uh, point of a diopside crystal. It comes from Minden, Ontario. You can see that lovely termination, kind of that classic diopside termination. Very lovely. I love the color of it too. It's a nice, it's a nice green coloration. Here's a pretty cool and little common um, thumbnail specimen. You can see those cubic crystals or QB crystals. Those are cobaltite, um, which is kind of an uncommon mineral. So it's very cool to have them in my collection. Uh, these come from the Brazil Lake occurrence. Sorry, the camera is struggling to pick them up. Sometimes with these higher like these metallic shiny minerals, it struggles to focus on them. But this is a, another welcome specimen to my collection. Here is a calcite specimen from Inver Huron, Ontario. You can see this lovely clear calcite crystal. And on the matrix, there's some more smaller ones and some druziness. It might be druzy quartz, that might be druzy calcite. Like, not too sure about this location. I'll have to do a little bit more research. But you can see there's a lovely clear kind of light yellow, just slightly light yellow calcite crystal. Very cool. We've got a couple specimens. We've got a couple specimens in perky boxes. This is a Tory uh, a Tory Hill uh, um, actinolite specimen. Very similar to the Dino Road stuff, but this is a different occurrence. Um, actually, close to Titanite Hill. For those interested i don't know if you can collect there anymore i can't remember if it's on public land or if it's on private land and you need permission so you guys if you're interested in that site do your due diligence and do your research before going there but it from what i remember it might you might be able to collect there regularly but i could be wrong don't take my word on it please here we have another lovely logan occurrence corundum with sharp faces to it and kind of a bronzy, brassy color. Very lovely. Now here we have an interesting specimen. This is Betaphyte from the Silver Crater Mine. And the Silver Crater Mine is known mostly for its Betaphyte specimens. Also some good zircons, if I remember correctly. But um, for those who don't know, Betaphyte is actually a radioactive mineral. Now don't worry, <laughs> me holding this won't hurt me. Um, I already tested it. Uh, it only registered at about 60 um, counts per minute, so it's very slightly radioactive at most. The background radiation at my place is like 12 counts per minute, so, um, but it's not to the levels where um, it'd be any, har any more harmful to me. So uh, this is a welcome little specimen, and this won't cause me any harm having it in my display cases. If, uh, that's what you're worried about, but this is a lovely crystal of Betaphyte. Another kind of classic Ontario specimen that I would unfortunately never uh, have the chance to collect. So I'm very happy that I was gifted this. Here we have a lovely little zircon crystal. It's perched on its matrix very nicely. Uh, this is from Halliburton, Ontario. Just a lovely example of a little tiny zircon crystal. Ontario produces some pretty awesome zircons. And actually this year, there are a couple locations that I would love to visit uh, to collect zircons this year. 
even though this specimen is quite small, this is quite a rare specimen, actually. This is a spherical graphite um, specimen in calcite. And this comes from Halberton, Ontario, from a highway road cut that I believe is probably either buried or it's been blasted or removed. The material's been removed, so, like, you can't collect, collect these anymore. Or it might just be a location that, like, you're forbidden to collect that. But from what I understand, you can't collect these specimens anymore. So this is very cool. And from what I know, graphite, at least the graphite that I have in my collection, I don't have any spherical graphite, so this is the first time seeing one of these. So that is pretty cool. Up next, we have actually a Duntas quarry specimen, which is really cool because you cannot collect there anymore. This is a specimen of marcasite. And actually, I'm quite surprised this marker site looks quite stable. And from what I know um, of the Dundas quarry, the marker sites there can be quite unstable and degrade pretty quickly. And this one looks very like, doesn't look like it's uh, seen too much oxidation or uh, pyrite rot, which is the usually the issue with these uh, specimens. So I am quite happy to have this guy in my collection. This is cool. Another specimen from a location I'll never pro pro probably collect at. You know, so it is a welcome addition to my collection. Just look at those golden blade crystals of marcasite. So very cool. Here we have a cluster of Thunder Bay Smoky Quartz. And there's a bit of what I believe this is barite um, and it's actually sitting on a matrix of green fluorite which is kind of cool but this is a uh, smoky quartz specimen from Thunder Bay lovely lustrous crystals with good kind of smoky color now here we have an interesting specimen this is a type of zircon known as critolite sorry if I pronounced that wrong um, and it's a variation of zircon that I believe has some radioactive um, elements in it, actually. Um, don't worry. Again, this I tested this specimen. I think it only got to 40 CPM, so it's not highly radioactive. So it's not dangerous for me to handle like this. But this is an awesome specimen. This, again, it comes from a location that I know for sure. Like, I've seen posts online that this location is... Like, you, you can't get in here, so, like, unless, like, you know, the landowners and can somehow get permission from them, like, I will never have a chance to collect here. And this is a lovely cluster of zircon crystals from there, and a pretty large one, I'd have to say. This is probably the largest zircon specimen I have in my collection now. This beats the uh, one centimeter crystal I found at uh, the CN Rock Dump by leaps and bounds so this is a killer zircon specimen and it, and it's a, a not so common variation of zircon with a kind of an interesting from an interesting location so that's very cool next we have a bit of eudolite and ampho from quebec um i love the gemminess and just the color of this like that kind of pinkish red color and how gemmy it is that's amazing and I've seen, I believe I've seen some eudolite specimens from this location. And this one, I'd have to say, has the best color I've seen of the specimen I've, I've at least seen in person. So this is a very cool specimen. Just like, look at those colors. Just like that lovely pinkish red color is just awesome. Reminds me like of a grape soda or something. So cool. Next, we got a classic uh, Ontario fluorite, purple fluorite from the Highway 17 occurrence in Rossport, Ontario, another place where you can't collect anymore. You can see the awesome, just these awesome purple fluorites with stepping and kind of just what you, you'd you expect from a, a Highway 17 fluorite specimen, a nice Highway 17 fluorite specimen. Just love that. I'm a sucker for fluorite, so any 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 additional fluorites into my collection are welcome, you know? 
I uh, I don't discriminate. I love fluorite. It's a it's yeah, it's a common mineral when you look at at the world as a whole, but man, is it a pretty mineral. Last but not least, we have a couple fluorite specimens from those who are Ontario collectors will know this location right away from the Rogers mine in Maydock, Ontario. These are some lovely green specimens, green fluorite specimens. This is a large singular crystal. You can actually see where it was attached to the barite matrix. This is a nice, lovely, large crystal, and it's got some lovely dark green spots in it. Now, with with actually with these fluorites from Madoc, they actually do. If you have them in like direct sunlight, be careful. They will fade. They'll fade from like the darker green to a, a light green, and like. People have, I've heard stories, people collecting this material and them just leaving it out for like an hour and the colors already changed. So it's one of those ones where I don't necessarily have heard that it'll totally bleach the crystals, but the color will let it be lessened. So you got to be careful. Now I sh should be pretty safe where I have my cases because I'm set up in a basement apartment and... The room I have them in doesn't really have any direct sunlight, so these should be should be safe to go into my cases without any worry of them getting too uh, discolored. But yeah, more lovely, awesome fluorite specimens to add to my ever-growing uh, fluorite uh, collection. Speaking of fluorites, I finally got my hand on a larger Dundas Quarry fluorite. Just check out this gemmy specimen. It has just a bit of damage on this corner, but overall it is, I would say, 98% there. So I'm very happy with the, this addition. And it's one of the ones that has the nice kind of lovely kind of light toffee color. And it's nice and clear. It doesn't have too many uh, bitumen inclusions because that, that's an issue that you can run into with the Dundas Quarry Fluorites is that there's... A bit too much inclusions and so they kind of don't look as nice as they could. I have a couple smaller ones like that that have some bitumen inclusions that kind of uh, decrease the clarity let's say of the specimen. But you can see it's also got a smattering of little sphalerites but this is just a lovely large um, Dundas fluorite specimen that I have now added to my collection. This one is actually one of the specimens I got in the trade I did over the holidays. I had a bunch of foreign specimens that had uh, done their part in my collection and I was ready to let them go. And so there was an acquaintance I knew who had some stuff he was willing to trade with me for the, the foreign specimens. And so we did a trade and I think he he was very gracious and he gave me some awesome specimens in the trade. So I'm very happy with what I got. With the trade, I actually got a couple more cobalt um, silver specimens. These are herringbone silver. They're from a pretty old collection from what I remember it saying or an older collector. Uh, he uh, ten he uh, purchases uh, collections and then resells them to people. And then he, you know, keeps a couple of the stuff, his specimens that he's interested in or uses uses that stuff to get himself the specimens he likes to collect, which I think is pretty smart. I find him to be, his uh, model of collecting to be quite successful. He has a pretty amazing collection, I have to say. Um, but these were two, two uh, cobalt silver specimens that I got in the trade. I'm thinking I might actually put one in a bit of uh, acid just to erode, uh, dissolve a bit of this calcite away to try and expose the silver the herringbone silver structures a little better but i've been told that can be risky so i'll have to i'll have to wait for a bit to make that decision whether or not i'm going to do that i know at least one won't for sure if i do here we got an interesting uh ontario quartz specimen this comes from a place that you wouldn't expect if you're an ontario collector this comes from wilberforce ontario there's a location there that produced some nice quartz crystals and vaguely remember hearing about it but my acquaintance had one of these specimens and this was a specimen he was willing to tr throw in the trade so I acquired this specimen it's a nice double terminated piece 
with some additional crystals on the side. And it's got some interesting little kind of um, facets and stuff. It's just a lovely Ontario specimen from a location that you would not expect usually. Here we have a Mont St. Hilaire piece. This is naturalite with what I believe is a bit of argerine. Um, and there's pro yeah, a bit of siderite on the back by the looks of it. This is just a large cluster of uh, bladed naturalite crystals. And Mont St. Hilaire is kind of known as kind of like the mecca of uh, Canadian minerals, or one of the meccas, I would say. There are a couple other spots that are for Canadian minerals that are known pretty famously as well, but Mont St. Hilaire is one of those. Here we got a bit of a fossil specimen, actually. This is kind of a rare specimen from the Arcona area. This is actually fossilized plant material. It's probably some sort of branch or stem, but this was, uh, he, my acquaintance got his hands on a local fossil collection, and this was in the collection, kind of unmarked, and he got it confirmed by some experts to be plant material. And this was a piece of plant material from that collection that he was willing to trade with me. So I jumped on the opportunity because it's very rare for Arcona like to have plant material. You can find it there, but it's very uncommon. And I've never s seen a piece, an example of plant material from Arcona this big. So, you know, this was like a, probably a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I'm very happy that this is now in my collection. I do plan to have a separate, I have a separate case, my old case that I used to display my minerals in. I believe that I'm going to turn kind of into a fossil display plus some other stuff that I've collected over the years. And so this will go in that case eventually. Here we have some classic Nova Scotia seam agate. This is a carnelian-esque seam agate with some plumes on the edges, as you can see. Some very lovely plumes. And then there's some faint banding in the middle sections. And it's just got this lovely look to it. So, you know, I'm a sucker for some good agate. And Nova Scotia is known to produce some awesome agates, especially seam agates. Um, so I jumped on the chance to add another piece to my collection. Of course, you can see I've wetted it down. It needs to be polished, but that's okay. I've got a flat lap. And so I can, I can spend my time polishing this piece because this is well worth, uh, well worth it to polish this specimen up. Here we've got a bit of an interesting thunder egg from the dragon skin claim in Oregon. Uh, this was the last piece that was added to the trade. It's this nice uh, uh, thunder egg that has just a bit of everything in my opinion. It's got some plumes. It's got some... Uh, water line, some faint fortifications. It's even got some like interesting little additional uh, bits and bobs. You can see in the back there's some kind of almost botryoidal stuff poking through. It's just this really lovely thunder egg. Um, I had to wet it down because it is unpolished, but this will be another specimen that I'll have to polish up, but I'm okay with that because this is an amazing uh, thunder egg specimen. It only had like one, uh, a couple minor fractures and you don't really, especially the one on the left side, you don't really see it once it's uh, wetted down. So I believe those fractures will kind of disappear once, or that fracture will not be as prominent once it's nice and polished. But yeah, a lovely, I'm a sucker for thunder eggs. So lovely thunder egg that will definitely be once in my collection once I kind of have a bunch of I've got a bunch of thunder eggs that I need to like cut and polish so once I kind of get those polished up I'll have like a little thunder egg section and this will definitely be in that section I don't know which way I should orient it let me know whether it looks better this way or this way I prefer this way I kind of like this way I like having this line of plumes on the bottom but let me know this is a this one will be uh, a future project for me, so I've got plenty of time to think about it. Here we have a specimen of manganite from the Atacokan mine. 
You can see the lovely bladed crystals. It's got some nice black luster to them. And it's a pretty, like it's a, a metallic um, specimen. And you can see actually it's got some very fine crystals on the back that are just kind of shedding off. So I got kind of have to be careful how you handle this or you're going to get a bunch of metallic uh, dust on your hands, but this is another very cool Ontario specimen to add to my collection. We have gotten to the end of the video. I thought I'd make a couple more announcements. I do plan on releasing my usual best of 2023 videos. I My fossil and my arrowhead hunting videos will be smaller, so I might just all release them in the same week, the two small ones in the middle of the week, and then um, my... Uh, rock hounding one in the at the end because that one will definitely be a pretty large video um also uh this coming week i think i plan on actually finally posting a quartz collecting trip i did out in bc when i was out in bc for three weeks uh that'd be at the same time i did uh that agate video and uh the uh gold panning video that i've done already that's from the same trip but yeah, those are kind of my uh, close-up plans. So those are the videos that you should probably be expecting in the near future. But I just want to thank you guys for supporting me. And I want to thank, once again, Digging Appalachia, Coin and Relic Ontario, and my acquaintance for all this wonderful material, for the gifts and the trade. I'm so uh, thankful for people like you guys in the community uh, that just... Uh, that our community is such an awesome community and you guys are a great example of why I enjoy being part of the rock hounding community. And I also want to thank you guys, the subscribers and watchers for being su such awesome people in the rock hounding community. Uh, please do in the comments below, let me know what your favorite pieces were in this video. There were so many awesome pieces. I can't choose. I know that for sure I can't pick favorites, uh, but uh, please do let me know because that it's always interesting to see what people are attracted to. Thanks again, guys. Have a wonderful day.